Hello, my friends, and welcome to another Dwarven Forge unboxing. Yes, that's right. The addiction continues. I realized that there's a category of minis that I just don't have, and that is Lizardmen. I did not have enough Lizardmen in my life. And let's just say without giving too much away, in my original world, there's a race that's very similar to Lizardmen. It's kind of a cross between Dragonborn and Lizardmen. Um, but I don't have minis to represent those. So the closest thing that I could find were either these like hero Dragonborn minis, which are kind of costly on an individual basis. And then I found Dwarven Forge's Lizardmen collection. And it's, you could get a whole bunch of them painted. And I thought, that's a great solution. That's going to work. Well, you know, sometimes when you're on Dwarven Forge's website, you're looking for one thing, and then you see something cool, and you're like, ooh, that's cool too. So I splurged. Don't do your life! And I got some other minis too. So let's take a look at my Dwarven Forge mini haul of Lizardmen and Fire Newts. All right. Oh, very well packed Dwarven Forge box. Very thoroughly taped. Okay, now I'm going to carefully pull the packing out. Mm. You know what I smell? I smell Dwarven Forge. Okay, Fire Newts. Lizard Man! Okay, we're going to open that up. Yep, there's my packing receipt. There's my special note from Stefan Picorni himself. Let me read it to you. Dear Bill, thank you for once again spending ridiculous amounts of money on Dwarven Forge materials. You know that I value our friendship very well. I can't wait to see you at GaryCon 10. Bill, you are like a brother to me, and I love you, and I can't wait until you come out to New York City so that we can party together. Sincerely, Stefan Picorni. That, that's not real, I just made all that shit up. All right. Let's get into the minis. So I'm going to open up the little package first. Now, if you've watched my other Dwarven Forge unboxing videos, you'll know that I love how they package these minis. I reuse this material. I don't take these minis out and put them in my own boxes. I just keep them like this because they're perfect. They're perfect containers. You could see through the front so you know what minis you're digging up. You don't have to open up hard boxes. And the cutouts are already predetermined. Okay. So we have three rows of minis, which is fantastic. Um, the top row, I'm going to pull this guy out. The top row of minis are kind of like, uh, I would say, sentinels almost. Like they're standing, maybe they're about to go into combat. But uh, can you see that? Can you see the details on that? Just awesome. Um, and this is the thing that I like about the Dwarven Forge pre-painted minis. Okay, they they have such a great amount of shading that I feel like their, their skin tones are very real looking. Like these guys have, you know, kind of that dark reddish undercoat and then they've got like kind of an orange overbrush and then, then a light highlight. And it just, what's cool is that that guy might be the same pose, but this guy who's in the same pose you could see that there's differences, like there are slight differences, which even makes it so that, you know, even though these are the same exact suit, you know, exact two same models, they look slightly different. So it kind of brings it to life almost. It makes it as if they're, you know, two different guards or two different warriors or sentries from the fire newts. Um, like this guy has some darker, you know, shadows and, and a little bit of brown in there. And one of these other guys, you know, same model, has kind of a little more of an orange, fiery look. So it's just really cool. Okay. The next row is another model who's holding their tridents kind of uh, to the side. They could be like in a marching formation maybe. So you could see that guy right there. Um, just love, again, love the detail. And here, here's another prime example here. So same, exact same mini, right? but with slightly different painting and slightly different shading, and they look different. Two minis up close that look different. Um, 
Great job, great job. And you know, I, I responded to this in an earlier unboxing video one time. Why don't I get the unpainted versions and paint them myself because I could add even more detail? Well, to be honest with you, part of it is time. Um, a big part of it is time. I just don't have the time to do it. So I love the fact that I could get these pre-painted minis and they look great. Now this is the last row. Uh, these minis are holding their tridents in a slightly, you know, in the opposite direction um, from the last row. So, but again, here's an example. This guy has, you know, his, his eyes have a little more shading around there. Um, the lower half of his body is a little more shaded. Um, so these guys are really, really, really cool. Now, you know, down the line, if I find myself with a little time, I might decide to go back and maybe do some, some detailing on these guys, which I could totally do because they're already painted. If, for example, if I wanted to paint their tridents to be like a metallic color, I could do that. I could go back and, you know, do all their tridents. Or maybe I could paint kind of, you know, their horns. I could give their horns different, like, designs. Or I could maybe provide their wings with a little more um, texture. I could do that. But the great thing is that these are ready for the table. They're ready to play. And, and that's one of the reasons why I look at my Dwarven Forge pur purchases as an investment, because they're ready to go. Um, they're not just sitting in a box at, like so many of us have, you know, unpainted minis and you feel overwhelmed because you just don't have the time to do them all. These are ready to play. And the reason why I have terrain and minis to, in the first place is to play the game. So um, great investment. Love these. Love these. Can't wait to use them. Um, these sculpts, in my opinion, are even better than the Fire Newts. And part of that could be because they're bigger. So it looks like there's um, two of each kind. Am I seeing this right? There's two guys. So here, I'll pull them out one at a time. There are two of these guys. Okay, so you got a, a running lizard man with a bone sword or dagger and a shield. Fantastic. Front, side. Then you have a running lizard man with a shield and a spear. Can you see him? I mean, look at the look at the detail on the scales. Like this is exactly why when I was on the website, there was no hesitation. I knew that I was going to buy the painted version because yes, maybe I could do this myself, but it would have taken forever. It would have taken a long time to do this whole batch. Um, so that is another 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 cool thing. This guy is here's a boss. This guy's a boss of some kind because there's only one of them. He is a spellcasting madman, which is cool, because I need some spellcasters in the world of lizards. Look at this dude. I mean, can you, can you get in there? Can you really see the detail up front? It is incredible. Like, he's got an amulet um, on his, you know, in his right hand. He's got a, you know, I don't know if that's like a bag of mojo or some, some pouch that he's holding. He's got a powerful scepter with a, a kind of a red crystal in the front. He's wearing these robes. That's just awesome. I, I'm so excited about that. All right, then we've got a pair here, another twosome, with possibly the dopest weapon ever. Take a look at that guy. So here we, here we have another warrior who's holding the shield up, and he's about to swing a flail. And what is the flail made of, you ask? Skulls, petrified skulls. That guy should be feared and he should win an award for having an awesome weapon. And there's two of them, so him and his buddy are just gonna smash people down with their skull flails. All right, then we have a standard bearer, and this guy is tall. Now, I have some other standard bearing minis. Most of them are from the old Grenadier or Ralpartha era. Um, and the thing with those metal minis that had standards is these standards would easily get bent or broken. So the nice thing is this guy is made of Dwarvenite. I could drop him and I'm not worried about that thing breaking. But what a cool thing, right? He's got this standard up there and the black fabric is blank. So again, if I wanted to, I could go in back and paint in some details on the fabric. I could paint in their, their clan symbol or whatever. Um, but it's mounted with skulls and it looks like he's blowing a conch like a horn to call people into battle. That's just, just cool, just so cool. All right, 
Then we've got another, this guy is just another hero. This is a, a two-headed lizard man, right? So it looks like the one guy is, he's either blowing a, a blowgun, maybe? Or whatever you want that to be. And then the other, the other hand is holding a trident, but you got a two-headed lizard man. He looks pretty fierce. Then we've got another hero mob right here. This guy is awesome. He looks like a leader. He's got like a huge shield. Let me move my fingers out of the way. You see that shield? So you got this huge, maybe a turtle shell. That's totally what it is. And I mean, really up close, you could see the details in the turtle shell. That's incredible. Good job on the painting, Dwarven Forge. His front looks cool. He's got a great pose. The spear is a little bent, um, which is a product of, you know, having plastic or rubber in your, in your material, but no big deal. Um, totally something that I don't care about and can look past because again, I can drop him on the table, literally. All right, now we've got another runner. This, this little guy has a stone ax, but again, just for like a basic combat mob, great detail. The scales, I cannot emphasize enough. If you can't see this, the, the, the detail on the scales is incredibly small, but so cool, so much texture. And that's exactly what I was hoping for. Here's another guy. Looks like he's wielding either a club or maybe that's a sling. Um, my eyes aren't that good, but I'm pretty sure the camera sees more detail. But even like little things like the, the necklaces or the bracelets or the armbands that they're wearing or the spiked ridge going down their back. I mean, that's just so, so, so cool. And there's three of those guys. So that's, I mean, I, I've, I am so happy, so worth the investment. And again, to me, the reason for having minis is to play the game. It's, it's not just to paint them. Um, I'm not a patient painter and I don't have time in my life to do all that. So I appreciate Dwarven Forge offering painted minis because it is well worth the value. And of course, it goes without saying that, you know, if you could afford it, go out and get your own. Um, These will be a great addition to my campaign and another awesome thing to have around in the collective for um, other games that I play in to be able to use. So hope you've enjoyed this unboxing Dwarven Forge minis double feature with the Fire Newts and the Lizardmen. Thanks for subscribing and stay tuned for all things related to games on my channel.